In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you one of my favorite ways to attack the meta Mabel coverage in Madden. I think this concept is going to be very effective in Madden 22 as well, especially with the way that the zones are playing so far in the beta and just kind of some of the predictions that I have for the defensive side of the ball. So this is going to be a great little concept. And right now I would tell you guys, I think that five wide is a lot of fun and you can actually learn a lot about five wide. Um, you, can, you don't have to just run five wide. You can take concepts that are good in five wide and apply them to trips tight end or uh, gun doubles because in essence, five wide is trips to the one side and then doubles to the other side or you know some other concepts like that. So anyways, let's dive into the video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I upload videos every single day that can help you become a better Madden player in Madden 22. Uh, right now we're in full training camp mode, labbing every single day different concepts and different tactics that will be useful in Madden 22. We've also put together a route encyclopedia guide for you guys that you can get down in the description of this video. And what that is, is basically it's a vault, it's a glossary, it's an encyclopedia of route concepts where you can say, okay, I want to learn route concepts for spread, or I want to learn, learn route concepts for bunch, or I want to learn route concepts for uh, compression sets, or two by two receivers, or I want to learn route concepts for the short side of the field versus the wide side of the field. We've broken all of that down and we're going to continue to update that over the course of the next couple of weeks for you. So I would encourage you to get it. It's a one-time fee of 15 bucks, but it will last you a lifetime because these are meant to be transferable concepts year in and year out in Madden. And we're also going to update that as over the course of the Madden 22 season as well. With that being said, let's dive into this video. Today we're talking about the play Levels. This is uh, one of my favorite plays of all time out of the Empty Trace stack. And Levels is really a great concept. It, it truly is a concept. And basically what the concept is, is it is a basically a high-low read. Uh, we're looking to the left side and we're gonna say, do we have a high-low read? Now, what I like to do on the back side of this is um, basically um, you could do a lot of different things. Uh, one of the things that I like, because of the spacing and where everybody's at on the field, I really like this very simple route concept. Um, and all it is, is we're gonna take the R1 and we're gonna put him on a hitch route. And then we're gonna take the circle receiver and we're gonna put him on a smart routed out route. I really like this one, two combination. Um, I actually like it a little bit better than a curl flat, uh, which is another way that you could run this if you want to. But I personally prefer uh, the hitch and smart routed out concept, and I'll show you why in just a second. Now the first read on this play is always a square receiver, um, and then to the triangle receiver. Now I butchered that first throw because Brady didn't throw the ball in a one and two. Um, but basically, at the snap of the ball, you're looking to the left side and you're asking yourself the question, can I throw the, the snap throw to the square receiver? Um, so literally just snap, throw it out there. And as you see right there, oftentimes if you, and, and real quick, let me show you one little pro tip. This is something that I haven't talked about too much on the channel, uh, but something that I do a lot. When you're coaching adjustments, what you wanna do is you wanna put your, your passing catching on conservative. It's gonna help them catch the ball a little bit better in traffic. Um, so that's, that's a little pro tip right there. And again, we're going over a little play levels. And let me jump back out here in, in the Mabel coverage. But what you'll see against Mabel coverage, and this is where, you know, they're really, especially if they're usering over in here, which is probably what they're going to do, um, a hook curl will not get out there. I'll show you a zone that will get out there in just a second. Uh, but if you just look your snap, throw it out there, and as you can see, you're off to a really good start. Now, some people, not very many people, but some people will do this defensively, depending on the person. And what they'll do is they'll... Um, they'll actually use it the trip side. So they're going to put their vertical hook to the left side on that defensive end, and they're going to use it the trip side. If they do that, let me just show you this route to square. You need to, it's not as open. I mean, it's just not as open. Um, it, it, it can be thrown. There is a small little window, and I'll show you it right now. Uh, but it, it can be thrown, but it's not really a great look uh, for, your, for your route. So again, here, and you're just literally snap throwing it. And you see, you can get it for five. But you really have to be like, I mean, gunslinger, you need to have gunslinger. You need to like really zip it in there quick. Um, and if you're in mud, you're more likely to get picked than in regs. In regs, you probably won't, won't get picked, but it's just not a great look. What's a great look, though, is if their user is sitting right here and he can't get out there on that play very often because literally it's a snap throw. So it's just snap, 
throw, it's hard for the user to get out there if he's user in that. So that's gonna force their user to start to do this adjustment, which I'm about to show you here. And this is gonna open up everything else in the play. Uh, but typically what we're gonna get is we're gonna get this guy having to sit over in this area uh, to be able to stop that. And so what that now opens up uh, is this hitch on the backside with the smart routed out route. And so here you'll see the tight end vertical really pulls and you see all that separation we get with the hitch route. Now that's my favorite um, thing to do to people out of trips, uh, out of trips. You could do this out of trips tight end as well. Um, is basically what you're going to get is you're going to get this coverage right here where they've got a vertical hook, which is the most outside breaking curl zone, the seam flat zone, which is the best zone against curl routes in the game. And then they'll have this for like a corner route or something like that. So they've got a really good sound defensive coverage and they're probably going to be sitting over here. So they're, you know, in, in trips tight end, this would be like, you know, tight end corner or curl flat or something like that. This little concept is something not very many people are doing right now, but it's a smart routed out route and a hitch. And what happens is the smart route out route is going to pull every purple zone, every flattened zone out of the way. And, and it's really important that it's smart routed because let me show you what happens if it's not. Uh, I'm not going to smart route that out route. I just want you to see what it does for the spacing of this play. Um, and, and here's what we'll show you. So again, just hitch out. And I just want you to watch the right side. Watch the seam flat. You see what happens if I try to throw that hitch, see it sits there. This is something that we cover in our defensive encyclopedia as well. We've got an offensive one and a defensive one. The defensive one is where we do a deep, a deep dive on zone coverages, how they react in zones and things like that. And one of the things that we really did a deep dive on is a 10 yard seam flat. And what we, what we found is a seam flat will only go outside if there's something to take it 10 yards, meaning a curl, an out, a hitch or something. If you wanted to do a curl, you certainly could. Um, I find the out route to be better um, for a couple of reasons, but if you wanted to do a curl route, let me just show you really quickly. You can do that. Um, let me put a vertical hook on the left side here. So if I wanted to just do a curl and, and a hitch, uh, hitch curl concept, which I'm going to talk about that in our route concept encyclopedia as a two man receiver play. But if you watch this seam flat, you'll see he still goes outside. He just goes to the uh, 10 yard, that idea of a 10 yard route. You could even put a dig out there and he'll go outside to the dig. So that is the beauty of the of the defensive encyclopedia which you can get that down in the description as well but that that is what it, it covers is it, it goes over okay this zone does exactly this and most people are going to run this mabel concept especially if you're running this this play because it is it is hard to defend it is hard to get stuff open uh, i just want to cover the tight end route just for a second you're going to see it as an option route um, against cover three you see that it's just a fade it, and what it actually turns into which is really interesting is it turns into like a, like an old school fade where they like drift to the outside. So what that could look like is, let me just show you real quick. So let's say for example, and I'm just doing this for purpose, like demonstration, but let's say this guy's in the hook curl and let's say this guy's in, an, in a third, very unlikely that that's gonna happen, but I just wanna cover it just in case it, it, it does. If they do bust a coverage up a cover three, most pros won't, but you know, average players might where the safety's coming from the weak side of the field, then this tight end route is gonna get open for a one play score uh, up the seam. Typically, if you have Gunslinger, you see how you can get that up the field. So that's another really good benefit of this is at least it, and here's the thing, in all of these concepts we talk about on the channel, they're gonna force a specific adjustment from your defense, which is gonna open up other things. So you're gonna see here, they're gonna have to sit over here with their user, then, if you look here on the on the tight end side, again, I'm putting the smart route out route, the hitch, that out route typically will hold that outside third. So if you wanted to, you could pass like this inside and you could just cut it off just like that. If you got a good quarterback, you know, you're going to be able to throw that for a pretty good game as well against that coverage. Now, uh, what I like about this, though, is it's not just something that is good against cover three. So it is an option route and it does change um, based off the coverage. So if you smart route it, you see it's going to go um, to about... Oh, about 13 to 14 yards down the field. So if you get man look, you're going to see that this this route is going to turn into a post route. Uh, and I love that about this play that it 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 doesn't just it, it fades against cover three and then against cover two, it's going to be a, a post route. Let me show you cover four real quick, just so you can get a full picture of like all the different shells that you're going to see. You'll see against cover four, he's just going to fade, and he's actually it's it's hard to see it. Uh, I'm going to throw a pick here, but. It's hard to see it in this, but it actually is an interesting route against cover four. It's, it's 
cover three, cover three, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, nickel three through five wide cover four is really a, the best way to play cover four in my opinion because they match on to vertical routes, whereas cover four drop they don't. So you could run like seat streak routes over the over the defense. But if you watch this route. You're going to see that he's going to get on top of him. You can pass lead this over the top. Now, you see at the bottom it says out of range lob pass. What that means is Brady doesn't have the strength to be able to get this ball over the top. But if you have a fast tight end and you get a good and you get a cover four look, which I don't get a lot of cover four, especially out of um, five wide. Most people don't do that because it's so easy to exploit it. But if you do, um, I'm just trying to say that the out route will do a good job. You could even turn him into a comeback route if you wanted to, um, to make this even better. But what will happen is, what you should see happen is this X will get on top of the tight end. So just right there, and you're just basically, when he's even, he's leaving, kind of lob it up. And, and again, Brady can't make the pass, but you do see that he does have a step over the defender. Let me just show it one more time, and then we'll cover the rest of the concept. And we're going to cover a little bit more of the, the two wide receivers in just a second. But I just want to give you a full picture of this because this, if you smart route it too, it gets him a little bit better. Um, so you see here, right there. And then once he's even, he's leaving. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. And again, you see, he's over the top of him. Um, that's that's the beauty of that route. Is it, it really is a special route. It does a lot of really good stuff. Um, real quick, last thing, Tampa 2. So if you get a Tampa 2... Um, and the middle of the field is open. See how he's going to just split them just like that up the seam. Obviously, if they put a deep third there, you're just going to lowball that post. But that puts that puts their user. What that does, um, what that route does, and I absolutely love it, is if they're in cover two, they, like, let's say they're in cover two, and let's say that they want to play basically like this right here. So they really want that heavy underneath presence. Um, to the trip side, they want to have Mabel right so and then they're going to do something like this this is a popular way to play cover two um you know maybe something like that and then and essentially what i would do with the x here is i'd probably put him in in a uh, three rep so they got really heavy underneath coverage okay so now their user has to choose am i going to sit under here or am i going to come back to the post so in this example you know you could get them in a situation where um you know you're hitting your levels concept all day so they're used to that and then you hit them with the post so that's why that route is there, and that's why it's really good uh, for this play. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about uh, as far as this as far as this concept is really this levels read, and I just want to show it with a basic with a basic hook curl first, and then I want to cover some of the games that the user is going to play. So, uh, first things first, if you know we've got our first initial read which we showed, but I love this triangle read, and the reason why I like that triangle. Um, that little C route, or not C route, but kind of trail route, is it's good against man and zone, but the thing that's really special about it is because of the, the way that the square receiver is gonna run up the seam, what you'll see is he's gonna hold that seam flat just like that, so I can low ball that for about three yards. Really simple and really consistent uh, read for this. Now, it's not just the seam flat that this is going to cause problems for. Again, remember that idea of a 10-yard curl flat adjustment. Even if they're, if they're at five, that you'll see that the zone will just drift outside and it won't play anything. But look, you see there, it's always open. That route is always open for you. They have to use or defend that route. So what you're going to get a lot of times, uh, I can just go ahead and tell you this is kind of what I've seen uh, in my experience, is they'll basically cover they're going to do this. This is their user. They're going to do this. They're going to come up and then they're going to come down on that trail. So they're going to try to take both of those away. I'm going to just illustrate this by showing this. And this is why levels is, in my opinion, such a powerful concept, because when you get a good levels route, you get really good spacing. And so one of the things that you can do is you can just simply you see that they'll cross and they they're like delayed. So they can't use or both. The timing is, is really a, a, an effective way to deal with this. And again, if you wanted to, there's no reason why you can't run just a simple curl flat read on the back side. It does help with the delayed spacing. What I love about this triangle route though also is it's really good against the blitz. Like it's really, really, really good against the blitz. Um, you'll see here, if I send a five man pressure, the seam flat zone is the hardest zone I think to manipulate against the blitz. But let's say you get a let's say you get something like this. All you're gonna do is just kind of move this guy in just like that. And as you see here, that's gonna be consistent. So 
I love the consistency of that little trail route. There's a lot that you can do with it that we don't have time to get into in this video, but that's the basic premise of the play. And uh, last thing, last thing is I do want to show you the curl flat. And the only reason I want to show you the curl flat is because I want you to see what happens once we pass the middle plane on the levels route. So you'll see here that the triangle receiver is going to stay under really flat and really underneath the defense just like that every time. So it's a really good underneath, you know, three to five yard route that you're going to have a lot of success with. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to get uh, a little bit more prep prepared for Madden 22, I have a route concept encyclopedia in the description that you can get for just 15 bucks that will give you route concepts that you can apply to any offense to make your offense more successful. And I also have a defensive encyclopedia that will actually break down exactly what the zones do in the game and how they function. Therefore, that way you can know not only how to call them defensively, but also how to manipulate them on the offensive side of the ball. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you'd like to get either one of those guides, they are down in the description.